Hello everybody. Today I am starting module 8 and it is my first lecture of the module 8. So today our discussion will be on vibration of membrane. Now membrane is the simplest two dimensional object and uh, it is actually used in various uh, fields. Engineering application is there even in the human body we have this ear membrane. So the vibration of membrane is very important for producing sound and therefore we should understand the how the vibration takes place in case of two dimensional membrane. So first what we will do, first we will derive the equation of motion for the membrane. Then we will go for eigen solutions for rectangular membrane. Then we will discuss a special case of degenerate case of modes, modal degeneration. Then we will solve initial value problem. Okay. So what is membrane? The membrane is a skin like structure and it has no bending resistance. So bending moment anywhere on the membrane is zero. So this is some uh, is similar to the string or flexible cable in uh, one dimension. So they are uh, the bending resistance is zero also in the string or cable but it is one dimensional only. Here bending resistance in both the directions, orthogonal directions are zero and it is a very thin structure just like a skin. The stretching of the membrane if the membrane is stressed then a tensile force that is developed acts as a resisting force to the transverse deformation of the membrane. So tension actually provides the elastic restoring force for the membrane in case of motion. Now let us see what are the practical application of the membrane. Practical applications are many. Some of these I have listed here, drum head of the musical instrument, the circular membrane of the drum head that is clamped to the drum shell and the surface of the drum head is struck with a drum stick and this produces the sound. Ear drum that is called tympanic membrane in human body, the membrane vibrates when sound waves strike it beginning the process that converts the sound waves into nerve impulse and that nerve impulse travels to the brain and we have a feeling of sound. Then microphone phone diaphragm, there is a microphone has diaphragm, it is also a thin membrane that moves in reaction to the external sound pressure variation. So these are the application of the membrane in engineering field or also you can see in human body that even say people of biomechanics should know the uh, the mechanics of membrane especially the vibration of membrane is important in relation to the production of sound. So first let us see the differential equation of the vibration of the membrane. So if you look at this figure, say this is the membrane, we have taken an arbitrary geometry uh, but uh, when we analyze, we will analyze some uh, specific geometry say rectangular or circular but here for derivation of the equation of motion, I have taken arbitrary geometry and the equation of motion will be valid for any geometrical shape of the membrane. So here the transverse load that is acting on the membrane is uniform over the uh, this membrane or may be distributed. It is not necessary that it should be uniform. It may be distributed in any manner, continuous distribution on the membrane. Then we have this uh, boundary, boundary of the membrane have different conditions that we will discuss shortly. Now as a result of this uh, transverse deformation of the membrane in the jet direction, the tensile force is uh, generated. So tensile force actually it is also assumed that it is uniform over the domain of the membrane. So therefore it does not depend on the space variable x and y. 
and also tensile force is independent of time because we are now considering the vibration this dynamics so time is also an index but the tensile force that is developed here is x y t should be a function of x y t but it is a constant so it is constant in our analysis so that is the primary assumption then transverse displacement is small enough that in plane deformation can be neglected so the large defer deformation may cause some in plane forces so that is not considered here so small deformation and small slope now this is a small element of the membrane that we have taken here in a magnified scale and you can see it is a rectangular membrane the this side is dx and this side is dy so dx in cross dy is the area of the small element now here you can see the tension t uh, x and y direction but this is uniform okay so these are two assumptions primary assumptions in the vibration analysis of the membrane okay now let us uh, draw the free body diagram in the x direction take a section in the x direction of the element and this is the free body of the this element that i am showing and it, this view is along the x direction so dx is the length of the element but this element after undergoing deformation is not straight it may be curved but since it is a small element the length dx can be considered as a curved length now here you can see this q is acting along this uh, this curved element so total load acting on the element is q into dx dy because dy is also involved dy is in the y direction but i have shown you view in this figure for the x direction so here you see that slope deflection is w deflection of the membrane is w transverse deflection and after a distance dx the deflection is increased the increased deflection is w plus del w by del x into dx so this is the incremental part in case of reducing displacement this will be given a negative sign now the slope of this deflected curve is del w by del x you can see this slope of the deflected curve is del w by del x on the other end the slope is also changed the change slope is del w by del x plus del by del x into del w by del x into dx so the quantity that is responsible for the change of the slope here so this is the free body diagram in x direction similarly if i show you the free body diagram in y direction you will see the tension is again same and uh, this deflection is w at the same point and the slope is changed in the y direction it is del w by del y that is partial derivative of w with respect to y and uh, on the other end of the element the deflection is w plus del w by del y into dy considering the slope in this uh, y direction and the change slope is del w by del y plus del by del y into del w by del y into dy you can see here this w is the transverse displacement of the membrane and it is a function of x y t that is the field variable x y t here q is also a function of x y t because it may be a time dependent load and the also it contains the space variables okay so it is a transverse displacement is a time dependent quantity and also the external load to transverse direction is also time dependent quantity okay now to derive the equations of equilibrium there are different methods available but here i will consider only one method that is the uh, by newton's second law so 
Newton second law is used to balance the all external forces with the inertia forces. Now here the motion is only in the transverse direction. So therefore, we shall uh, equate the forces in the transverse direction with the inertia force. So let us see what are the forces in transverse direction. If you see that uh, this T say our downward uh, direction is positive then uh, this uh, this T the tension T at this end will have a vertical component and it is T sin theta suppose this is angle theta so the vertical component is T sin theta but since sin theta is equal to del w by del x actually it is tan theta but tan theta is approximately equal to sin theta and also theta because of small deflection and small slope. So therefore we can assume that sin theta is del w by del x and therefore vertical component of tension at this point is t into dy it is the force along this direction along this edge into del w by del x. So this force has, uh, is resolved into vertical direction. Then we come here and we can see there are uh, slope which is changed. So del w by del x plus del by del x into del w by del x into dx. In fact the theta here is changed. So if this is the angle theta this will be say theta 1 and theta sin theta 1 is nothing but del w by del x for small displacement and del by del x del w by del x dx. So the component of this force in the vertical direction is now calculated because the downward direction is positive so its component of t in the vertical direction will be downward so first part is t dy again the length is dy so total tensile force here is t dy into del w by del x plus t from this quantity it is coming del square w by del x square dx dy t then uh, this uh, other quantity is there from this uh, y direction similar you will find minus t dx del w by del y plus t dx del w by del y plus t del square w by del y square dx dy. Here you mind that tension t is the tension per unit length of the membrane or per unit width of the membrane because tension is same in any direction in the two orthogonal direction that I have taken. And this should be uh, also increased, this total uh, force should be increased by the external load. So external load is also acting in the downward direction. So Q dx dy that is the total load on this element. So it is taken here equal to inertia force. So here rho is the mass density. Mass density that is actually area density that is mass per unit area per unit area. So here we will remember that rho is expressed as mass per unit area. So total mass on this element is rho into dx dy and inertia force on this uh, acting on the mass is del square w by del t square this is the acceleration at any instant of time. So this is the inertia force. This equation is coming from the Newton second law simply by Newton second law. So you can see the equation of motion is written in the transverse direction and all the forces summation of all the forces are equated to the inertia force. Now dividing both sides by dx dy and you will see some terms will get cancelled. So this is cancelled with this minus t dy del w by dx plus 
t dy del w by del x is cancelled. Similarly, this is also cancelled minus t del uh, dx del w by del y. Then here also it is cancelled t dx del w by del y. So it gets cancelled. Only term that is remaining is t del square w by del x square dx dy plus t del square w by del y square dx dy. So these are the two terms remaining and also the load q dx dy and on the right hand side that is the inertia force acting on this element. So uh, the common terms are cancelled and the two sides are also divided by dx dy and therefore we get the equation t bracket del square w by del x square plus del square w by del y square bracket closed plus q q is a function of x y t but here t is constant uh, equal to rho del square w by del t square so this is the differential equation of motion of the membrane and the motion is in the transverse direction subjected to the uh, this external load q and if q is 0 then motion will be under the influence of initial condition. So this can be written as t del square del square is Laplacian operator in Cartesian system. So we get the equation is simply this t del square w plus q equal to rho del square w by del t square. The equation of motion is obtained by Newton's law. Now we take free vibration case first. So differential equation of motion of the membrane is derived and we take a free vibration case where the external force is 0. So we take q x y t that is the external force equal to 0. Remember that T is a tension in the membrane which is a constant quantity. So differential equation now becomes T del square W equal to rho del square W by del T square. This equation must be satisfied in the domain D bounded by one or more curves S and if the membrane is fixed at the position, some position or location say this point is a1 b1 then w is 0 at a1 b1 but if the membrane is free to deflect transversely at some other points say a2 b2 then t del w by del n that is the uh, derivative with in the with respect to normal direction so normal to the boundary normal to the tangent drawn at the boundary is equated to 0 and it is at a to b if this point is free. So derivative is taken normal to the boundary and in the plane of reference of the membrane that is we have taken x y plane ok. Now phi vibration of rectangular membrane is first considered. So let us take a rectangular shaped membrane. So it has a length a and width b so that aspect ratio that we generally for two dimensional plane element we have a important term called aspect ratio it is a by b. So aspect ratio here is a by b we can denote it by r capital R and the origin is taken here so the x axis here it is x axis and it is y axis. The membrane is fixed along all sides and it is rectangular in shape. Now for free vibration again we assume that motion is harmonic so therefore a harmonic term in terms of uh, complex number is assumed. So here E i omega t is assumed to represent a harmonic term because when we expand this we will get cos omega t plus i sin omega t. So therefore this term E i omega t contains the harmonic term that oscillatory terms. So uh, using the separation of variable technique we can write 
that capital W small w x y t is equal to capital W x y e to the power i omega t. This is the assumption for the displacement transverse displacement in free vibration. Now substitute this equation in the differential equation of the membrane. After substituting this here, you substitute this equation here. Okay, then you will get in this term that del square can be your del square is this Laplacian operator. So when you differentiate this then del square capital W is coming del square x square is coming. Since uh, again it is a partial differential operator because capital W also contains two variables. So we have to write the partial differential operator. So t del square w by del x square plus del square w by del y square and on the right hand side if you differentiate two times with respect to t then i omega square will come and i is a imaginary number i is root over minus 1 so i square is minus 1. So when i square omega term will come then we can write minus rho omega square w. Now this equation is slightly rearranged divide both sides by rho then we get t by rho and bringing this to the left hand side we get t by rho del square w by del x square plus del square w by del y square plus omega square w equal to 0. Okay. Now here I have divided both sides by rho so therefore this omega square w is coming here and t by rho is a very important quantity and we know it it is the square of the wave velocity. So this equation you can see is similar to the wave equation but it is two dimensional. So this equation is popularly known as two dimensional wave equation also. The free vibration of membrane rectangular membrane is also known as two dimensional wave equation. So let t by rho is c square where c is the wave velocity then we can express this equation as del square w where del square is Laplacian operator plus omega square by c square w equal to 0. So this is the free vibration equation. Now this equation along with the boundary condition has to be solved and this solution will constitute the boundary value problem from which we can find out the eigenvalues and corresponding Eigen functions. Okay. Now, because it is a two variable, so let w x y equal to b e to the power i alpha x plus beta y, where alpha and beta are unknown constants, and i is again imaginary number. Because it is harmonic, so we have taken i as a imaginary number. So alpha and beta are constants, unknown constants. Okay. Now substitute this in the differential equation. So this equation we take and we substitute w x y here. After substitution you will get that uh, w x b will be cancelled from both sides or from all terms b will be there and that will be cancelled. But what will remain is our minus alpha square minus beta square plus omega square by c square and it is equal to 0. So alpha and beta has have to be chosen in such a way that it satisfies this equation omega uh, alpha square plus beta square equal to omega square by c square. That means we can write from here uh, omega square by c square is equal to alpha square plus beta square. So natural frequency omega that is omega is the natural frequency of the membrane natural frequency. So natural frequency omega can be written as c root over alpha square plus beta square. Now our in main target is to know the value of 
C because C will be required to calculate this uh, wave velocity that is C that is required and also our main intention will be to find out alpha and beta without alpha and beta we cannot find the natural frequency C will be known from the tension in the membrane and the mass density okay so general solution of W X Y again you can see that if you expand this quantity e to the power i alpha x plus beta y we can write w x y equal to bracket we take any constant say b1 cos alpha x plus b2 sin alpha x because when you this term individ individual terms because if you expand this it will be expansion of two exponential term e to the power i alpha x into e to the power i beta y. So therefore two terms in the bracket will be b1 cos alpha x and b2 sin alpha x which is nothing but the expansion of e to the power i alpha x. Then the second bracket, uh, the bracket, uh, the other terms in the bracket in the second expression it is c1 cos beta y plus c2 sin beta y. So it is coming from the uh, term when it is extended, expanded e to the power i beta y. Okay. So now term multiplication can be carried out and we uh, get after multiplication term by term multiplication and after renaming the constants because it is not necessary the constant two constants should be say b1 c1 will be again constant and it is renamed as a1. So w x y equal to a1 cos alpha x cos beta y plus a2 cos alpha x sin beta y plus a3 sin alpha x cos beta y plus a4 sin alpha x sin beta y. So term by term multiplication of these uh, quantities uh, yield this solution w x y is equal to a1 cos alpha x cos beta y plus a2 cos alpha x sin beta y plus a3 sin alpha x cos beta y plus a4 sin alpha x sin beta y. Now there are four constants that have to be known from the boundary conditions and then we can only find the specific solution for the eigenvalues. Okay. Now boundary condition can be known from the, the membrane that has clamped edges. From this information we know that x is equal to 0 edge so along this edge this edge, edge is x is equal to 0 edge but y is varying so w 0 y this edge the deflection is 0 and also in this edge where this y is 0 but x is varying there is w x comma 0 equal to 0. So at these two edge we have written the boundary condition. So after applying this boundary condition here you can see when you put x is equal to 0 here first condition then we get a1 cos beta y plus a2 sin beta y other terms contain sin alpha x so it is 0 so therefore it is not coming. Then if you apply this condition w x 0 equal to 0 that is you have to put y is equal to 0 in this expression then you will get this a1 cos alpha x then you will get this because this uh, y 0 here will give this term 0. So then you will get a3 a3 sin alpha x equal to 0 and these two equations uh, that is a homogeneous two uh, equation it gives actually a1 equal to a2 equal to a3 0. So all these constants are 0 so only constants that are remaining is a4 therefore we can get the w x y is equal to a4 sin alpha x sin beta y. So this is the eigen function that we have obtained. Okay. But still we are not able to know 
what is alpha and beta because alpha and beta you have seen that it is related to the natural frequency of this system because we have got this omega is equal to c root over alpha square plus beta square but in case of uh, this membrane and a continuous system there will be infinite number of natural frequency and infinite number of eigen function that is possible so we have to find the infinite number of alpha and infinite number of beta okay so apply the other boundary conditions so other boundary conditions are this at uh, this edge say for example uh, we have taken this edge and this edge if i take this edge which is x is equal to a but y is varying and also this edge where this uh, uh, this y is equal to b and x is varying these two edge condition now have to be applied so apply this condition w a y and w x b equal to 0 in this equation so what is the equation equation was w x y it is reduced to only uh, one constant equation so so a4 now we are writing as a because only one constant is there and it was sine alpha x and sine beta y so that equation was only obtained after putting the boundary condition at this edges if this is the membrane rectangular membrane and this is a and b and the sides are fixed so after applying the boundary condition here at x is equal to 0 this edge and this edge we get a1 and a2 a3 a2 are 0 then after applying the boundary condition at this edge and this edge we are now getting this equation a sin alpha a sin beta y if you put the first boundary condition you will get sin alpha a sin beta y second condition w x b you will get uh, this a sin alpha x uh, then sin beta b okay so these are zero now this indicates that sin alpha a equal to zero that means if sin alpha a equal to zero because beta y is not zero so sin alpha a is the zero a is a constant which is not zero if a is zero the solution will be trivial so if sin alpha is zero then alpha a have infinite number of roots m pi so now this alpha will be indexed so alpha m is given subscript m is given to denote this value of alpha at infinite number of m that is possible 1 to up to infinity so alpha m becomes m pi by a similarly beta b is equal to n pi now we will give this index to the attach index to the beta and it is beta n equal to n pi by b n pi by b so therefore it is uh, the n varies from 1 to up to infinity up to infinity so hence the equation that was used for finding the natural frequency is minus alpha square minus beta square plus omega square by c square equal to 0 now you can see that alpha m and alpha uh, beta n these are two indexed so therefore if you take alpha m is equal to say 1 and beta n is equal to say 2 then natural frequency will turn out to be say omega 1 2 so therefore the omega has to be indexed with two variables m and n two constants m and n m and n represents the integer value or it is called the the harmonics so omega m n will become equal to c pi root over m square by a square plus n square by b square so this is the expression for the natural frequency of the membrane
natural frequency of the membrane. Now you can see if I uh, omit this n square by b square term then it is similar to the natural frequency of the string that we have obtained where the higher frequencies are only integral multiple of the fundamental frequency. So fundamental frequency is obtained putting m is equal to 1, n is equal to 1 and you can see fundamental frequency is c pi root over 1 by s square plus 1 by b square. So this expression can be slightly rearranged to bring the aspect ratio in this expression. So taking 1 by s square common, so it is like that m square plus a by b ratio, so r square n square. So you will get this uh, where r is a by b aspect ratio. So therefore this uh, frequency also varies with the aspect ratio. Now model shape that is the Eigen function is Wmn xy equal to sin m pi x by a into sin n pi by b into y. So this is the Eigen shape. Here we have taken the amplitude 1 but the amplitude can also be normalized in various ways. It can be normalized with respect to mass then the integration that will result in a constant which is uh, not 1 this a will be something but here we have taken a is 1. So let us take another eigenfunction rs. Now to test whether the eigenfunctions are orthogonal let us test this. So test it like that take uh, another eigenfunction wrs ok. So then the product of this wmn xy wrs xy dx dy when it is integrated in the domain of the membrane 0 to a 0 to b gives you sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b sin r pi x by a sin s pi y by b dx dy. So therefore the integration result is a b by 4 Kronecker delta m r Kronecker delta n s. So where the symbol delta this symbol represents the Kronecker delta. Kronecker delta has meaning that this m r equal to 1 if m is equal to r otherwise 0. Similarly Kronecker delta n s n s is equal to 1 if n is equal to s. So therefore Kronecker delta is attached here to indicate that when m is equal to not r the integration is 0 or if n is equal to not s the integration is 0. So this proves the orthogonality condition which will be useful for decoupling the equation of motion. Okay. Now let us see the model shape. Now you can see this natural frequency depends greatly on the aspect ratio that I have written here also you can see a b parameters are there. So they are greatly dependent on aspect ratio. So we have taken an aspect ratio say a by b is half that is 0.5 where the length in x direction is say 1 and length is y direction is 0 0.5 uh, 2. So 1 by 2 is uh, 0.5. So this aspect ratio is taken and therefore we plot this. Now you can see the first mode that is omega 1 1 corresponds to frequency omega 1 1. This is the first mode so m is equal to 1, n is equal to 1. No nodal points are visible and if you see this section that is at any line you will see this section. Similarly on this line you will see this section like that. So this is a uh, first mode the fundamental mode and omega 1 1 is the fundamental frequency. Fundamental natural frequency.
Now for this uh, mode, say fundamental frequency W11, we have take this as a base. So let us take this mode 1, 2. So in this case, the omega 1, 2, if you substitute this A by B is 0.5, then you will find that omega 1, 2 equal to 1.26 omega 1, 1. So this is the second frequency. This is second means wave number 1, 2 corresponds to uh, omega 1, 1 multiplied by a factor 1.26. So here you can see in this uh, x direction because m is 1 so x direction there is no node but when n is equal to 2 in the y direction you are getting the node that means y direction if you see the curve in this section you will get this curve. So there is distinct nodal points here nodal lines actually nodal lines is generated here at the middle of this this is the nodal line here nodal line corresponding corresponding to the mode 1 and 2 where the frequency is 1.26 times of the frequency of the fundamental mode provided a by b is 0.5 okay so this is the nodal line nodal line. Similarly, when m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 3, we are likely to get two nodal points along this x direction. So therefore, you are seeing that this is the mode that is obtaining here. So we are getting these two nodal lines here. Two nodal lines so when the mode is uh, mode number is 1 that is m is equal to 1 you will not get any mode in this x direction if this direction is x this direction is y so nodal line is obtained okay next let us consider this uh, higher mode say 2 1 2 2 and 2 3 so if you see 2 1 mode m is equal to 2 now here you are getting the nodal lines or the deflection curve that is one portion is elevated and one portion is depressed that you are seeing here so nodal line is generated along this y axis so this is nodal lines here and it is 1.84 times fundamental frequency. So omega 21 is 1.84 fundamental uh, of fundamental frequency uh, for the aspect ratio AB by 0.5. So mode uh, 2 2 that is m is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 you will get the nodal lines in both the directions. So therefore you are getting here nodal lines in x direction as well as nodal line in the y direction so that is possible now mode 2 3 so in the x direction you will get one nodal lines that you are getting already so one nodal line is there but here for n is equal to 3 along the y axis you are getting this two node two nodal lines like that you can decide the nodal lines or from the appearance of the mode shape you can also decide in which mode it is vibrating so it is vibrating is omega 2 3 nodes frequency then if I see the mode 3 1 actually it is uh, m is equal to 3 so here you are seeing uh, these two nodal lines, two nodal lines are possible, okay, yeah, completely two nodal lines are possible and uh, one, so n is equal to one, so there is no nodal lines along this y direction. So um, this uh, here you will find that nodal lines here, 
these are the two nodal lines that you are getting completely because of here you can see this portion is elevated and this portion is also elevated whereas green color is depression. So this frequency omega 3 1 is again 2.72 times of the fundamental frequency. Then mode 3 2 here m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2. So in the x direction you are getting this similar nodal lines. So y direction you are getting the nodal lines. Uh, this is elevated, this is down. So you are getting this uh, nodal line here. But corresponding to m is equal to 3, you are getting nodal line here and here. Okay. So that is the characteristics of the mode shape that you are getting and here mode 3 3 that is m is equal to 3 n is equal to 3 and the frequency omega 3 3 you can see it is 3 times of omega 1 1 and here also you can see omega 3 2 is 2.83 times w 1 1. In earlier also when we considered the mode 2 2 m 2 2 then you can see that omega 2 2 is 2 omega 1 1. So what does it indicate? It indicates that this uh, the frequency omega 1 1, omega 2 2, omega 3 3 etc. are integral multiple of the fundamental frequency but other frequencies are not so. Okay. Here m is equal to 3, m is equal to n is equal to 3 you are getting the nodal lines as expected. as expected you are getting the nodal line as expected ok. So this is about the mode shape that is obtained from the eigenfunctions a is taken as 1 so I am not writing any constant here so sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b. All right. Now let us see some special cases that is called degenerate case of eigenmodes. When a by b ratio is a rational number that is the aspect ratio r is a rational number we have repeated eigenvalues that means omega mn may become omega rs if m square plus r square into n square you can see m square plus r square n square equal to r square plus r square s square this is from the equation this omega mn so omega mn if i see this equation in both the omega rs also this term will be there so if i square it then i will get m square plus r square n square equal to r square plus capital r square into s square. Now this shows that some frequencies are repeated. So if r is equal to 4 by 3 for some aspect ratio it will be repeated not for all. So let us see for r, r is equal to 4 by 3 it is seen that omega 3 5 equal to omega 5 4 and also omega 8 3 equal to omega 4 6 etc. However for square membrane you will get m square plus n square because in this case capital R is 1 so m square plus n square equal to r square plus s square so that indicates that omega mn equal to omega rs so in that case it is seen that two distinct eigen function omega mn and omega nm corresponds to same frequency in case of square membrane hence there are fewer frequencies than eigen modes. Now whenever we get repeated eigenfrequencies any linear combination of the corresponding natural modes is also a natural mode. So that is very important statement and orthogonality condition still is valid. So we have studied the dynamics of thin membrane uh, two dimensional uh, element. 
So a 2D membrane is often described as simply being an extension of string. But similarities is there also, dissimilarities are also there. So there are also several important ways that membranes are distinguished from strings. So for a string, the frequencies are all integral multiple of fundamental frequency. That is fundamental frequency is n is equal to 1 for the string. But in case of membranes, regardless of dimension, aspect ratio, there are only set of modes which will always give integer multiply, multiples of the fundamental frequencies for a rectangular membrane. So, so in, integer multiples of fundamental frequency is obtained for omega 2 2 is equal to 2 omega 1 1, omega 3 t is equal to 3 omega 1 1 like that. Omega 1 1 is fundamental frequency. So this is the uh, difference between the string vibration and the membrane vibration. Okay. Now let us see the free vibration response of the membrane. It is called the initial value problem. So given the initial condition only we can analyze the free vibration. So now uh, incorporating the time function and mode superposition principle we can write W X Y T that is the transverse displacement of membrane equal to double sum m is equal to 1 to infinity n is equal to 1 to infinity sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b into the time function that we have obtained from this when we use the separation of variable c m n sin omega m n t plus d m n cos omega n t where omega n is the natural frequency corresponding to uh, mode m n and c m n and d m n are constants of integration. Now suppose that initial conditions are such that w x y t is equal to 0 is equal to some function of x y. So w naught x y it is given. Similarly the velocity initial velocity that can be obtained after uh, taking the time derivative of this expression and then putting t is equal to 0. Uh, we are given a function v naught x y as the initial velocity. Now if I apply t is equal to 0 in this expression then I can write w naught x y equal to double sum m is equal to 1 to infinity double sum n is equal to 1 to infinity sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dmn. Now our intention is to find the unknown constant dmn. Okay. So in this equation we again apply the same technique that we have used in case of beam but here instead of single integration double integration will be required. So multiplying both sides of the above equation by sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b if I multiply both sides by this sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b and then integrate using the orthogonality condition because uh, it is a summation term so only this integration of sin square m pi x by a dx will be existing but other terms the sin m pi x by a or sin of say r pi x by a when m is equal to not r then it will be 0. So in view of this we get this uh, dmn there will be after integration the multiplying and after integration applying the orthogonality condition the right hand side will become say dmn dmn ab by 4 because the integration of sin square m pi x by a dx 0 to a is equal to a by 2. Similarly integration of sin square n pi y by b dy 0 to b is equal to b by 2. 
So we are getting dmn ab by 4 and right hand side is w naught x y into sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b and integration with respect to dx dy. So dmn becomes this 4 ab 4 by ab double integration 0 to a 0 to b the limits 0 to a and 0 to b w naught x y sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dx dy. You should note that uh, this w naught x y is a given initial displacement of the membrane okay, which is a function of x y. Now let us come to other constant say c m n. Now c m n has to be uh, obtained from the initial velocity condition. Given the initial velocity v naught as a function of x y. Now let us differentiate the displacement function with respect to time. Differentiate the displacement function with respect to time. So that differentiation is written as w dot x y t w dot x y t is nothing but your del w by del t. So w is given as a double sum of this and your time function c m n sin omega n t plus d m n cos omega n t. Now when we differentiate with respect to time space function remains same. So there is because it will be treated as a constant when we differentiate with respect to time. So time function after differentiation there is the sign term will be cos omega n t and the omega m n will come out as a constant c m n is there. Then the other uh, term that is cosine term the d m n omega m n sin omega n t. Okay. So at t is equal to 0 because this will go to 0 we have the equation say uh, c m n omega m n only. So c m n omega n n because cos 0 is 1. So therefore we get v naught x y equal to sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b c m n omega n. Of course after integration now if you carry out the integration after multiplying both sides with the term sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b one side you will get v x y sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dx dy and its double integration 0 to a 0 to b and it is equal to say c m n omega m n. Now after integration there is a also constant term a b by 4 is coming. So c m n can be easily found out as 4 by a b integration 0 to a 0 to b and omega m n because omega m n is indexed so it is coming here as omega m n v naught x y sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b dx dy. So when you want to evaluate the uh, expression for c11 then you put the frequency omega 11 and this is sin pi x by a sin pi y by b. So this is integrated uh, with dx uh, uh, with respect to dx and y and the limit is put because this is a definite integral. So you will get the constant term after integration. So in this way the unknown constant c m n and d m n for the time functions are obtained and we get the complete response for the transverse vibration of the string. So phi vibration of the string now can be written completely because we know this mode shape function sin m pi x by a sin n pi y by b and then the time function is also known c m n sin omega m n t plus d m n of course here it is this is c m n uh, sin 
and dmn cosine omega n t okay so after knowing the constant of integration we can obtain this uh, transverse vibration of the string which is due to initial condition so this is the original expression that we have obtained and our time function is this cmn sin omega n t dmn cos omega n t so cmn dmn is obtained using the technique that i have discussed and finally this result is this okay so let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture vibration of rectangular membrane is discussed first the governing differential equation is obtained using newton's second law thereafter the natural frequencies and modes of the rectangular membrane has been obtained the degenerate case of the membrane's natural modes are explained lastly the method of solution of initial value problem in rectangular membrane has been discussed thank you very much mm -hmm.